Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us um, continue the discussion on the ramjet and we are looking at the individual modules first like we have looked at intake and the burner. Now we are looking at uh, we are going to look at nozzle and then finally the complete engine analysis. So how would the nozzle again the nozzle would look like let us say draw a schematic of the nozzle it may uh, look let us say uh, like this here is some portion here. Uh, so, again this is A and B which is used as a inlet and exit. So, the T S diagram for the nozzle module this would be uh, A to B. So, this is B. So, this is uh, B S, this is O A, so this is uh, let us say we get O B and this portion is B B square by 2 C P. And if I draw the again the block diagram, let us say the nozzle, here is the nozzle, it has nozzle efficiency of eta n, exit velocity V B, exit temperature, inlet T naught A, P naught A. Again, a is inlet, B is outlet. Now, what happens then? Eta n is T naught A minus T naught B by T naught A minus T B S. And what we can do? T B equals to T naught A 1 minus eta n. 1 minus P B by P naught A gamma M minus 1 by gamma M minus 1. So, and we get the exit velocity is 2 C P M T naught A minus T naught B. Here C P M is the mixture specific heat because now this is after the bond product. So, we use that. Now, let us say if nozzle is a convergent type and choked, then the Mach number at the exit is sonic. So, exit condition would be critical one, then the ratio between the total temperature to the static one would be T naught A by T critical which is gamma plus 1 by 2 and the nozzle efficiency that time could be calculated T naught A minus T critical by T naught A minus T naught T B S 1 minus T C R by T naught A 1 minus T B S by T naught A which is 1 by 2 gamma plus 1 1 minus P R C by or P C R by P naught A gamma minus 1 by gamma M. Now, 
and critical pressure ratio we know that this would be P naught A and P critical would be 1 by 1 upon 1 by eta n gamma m minus 1 by gamma plus 1 gamma m by gamma minus 1. So, this is what the critical pressure ratio is. So, now you see why the discussion of compressible flow and all these uh, relationships are important because uh, this is what going to be handy. Now, with that we move ahead with the complete engine. Uh, Let us say we draw an engine like, like that. Uh, something like that, then so then there would be nozzle. So, here things are at the exit, these are the hot, then we have this portion for the inlet this is called the diffuser then we have here let us say somewhere fuel is injected this is the burner so we call this one as the combustion chamber and then uh, this portion we call it nozzle. Now, we have different zone, let us say A 1, then we got a 2, 3, 4, 5, now, A to 1 is supersonic compression, 1 to 2 subsonic compression, 2 to 3 fuel inlet, 3 to 4 combustion, 4 to 5 or rather 4 to complete 6 is the expansion process in nozzle. So, and if you put a sort of an block diagram to that, then uh, it will look like an, let us say you have intake where you M 1 comes in, T 1, P 1, this is where your M dot A goes T dot 2, P dot 2, this is combustion chamber where you inject fuel and then it comes out T dot 4, P dot 4 goes to nozzle, it gets T 6, gets V 6 and in between there could be. So, can go there. So, this is the complete block diagram. Now, once you have the block diagram, then you can always uh, put the cycle, let us say we can put the T s diagram, let us say T s diagram what happens we will go here, this is A, then uh, this is 4, then we come to 6. So, this is 0 2, then this is 6, this is 
0 4. So, this is an ideal T s diagram where P naught A is P naught 2 is P naught 4 equals to P naught A P 6. So, that is an ideal situation. Now, in realistically that would not happen because you will have this uh, oblique shock or shock boundary layer interactions which will take place in the intake there would be losses and that loss will also continue um, and that is why the actual cycle would be slightly different and if you plot that actual cycle let us say if this is the point and this is the point of 0 2. Uh, so, this is P naught 2 and so instead of this, this is A, this is P naught A. Okay. So, the actual one comes here and uh, and then you go also to this is 0 4 ok. So, the actual is the dotted mm. so it comes here. and so this is p6 this is 0.6 and this is p not 6 so this would be so here these lines which are dotted lines now the actual one differs from the real one and that because of some of these losses which takes place. Now, first we will start with the ideal cycle. Now, when you look at the ideal cycle, this is the previous T s diagram that we have, what will have that the ideal cycle the pressure total pressure is constant in the cycle. So, P naught A is P naught 2 is P naught 4 which is P naught 6. Okay. So, since uh, no work nor heat addition or rejection takes place in the intake and nozzle. So, we can apply the first law of thermodynamics. So, what we will get T naught A is T naught 2 and T naught 4 is T naught 6. So, that is what we get. Now, nozzle is assumed to be unchoked. So, then the full expansion of the hot gases within the nozzle to the ambient pressure is assumed and therefore, we will have P A equals to P 6 equals to P exit. Now, we can write down the all the um, total and stagnation condition between 6 and E. So, what we will write T naught A by T A is 1 plus gamma A by 2 m square which is T naught 2 by T A and T naught exit by T E which is T naught 6 by T 6. 1 plus gamma 6 minus 1 by 2 m e square equals to T naught 4 by T e. And similarly, we can write for the pressure P naught a by P a which is 1 plus gamma a minus 1 by 2 m square gamma a by gamma mi minus 1 
P naught 6 by P e which is 1 plus gamma 6 by 2 m e square gamma 6 by gamma 6 minus 1. So, these are the stagnation condition that we can write. Now, what we also have P naught 6 by P e is P naught a by P a. So, we can arrive at the relation at that. So, can get m e is m. Now, the inlet and exit Mach number are equal, but the exit speed is not equal to the flight speed. So, what is clear that u v is a e by e which is gamma 6 r t exit by gamma a r t a into u. So, if you assume gamma r to be constant within the engine, then u exit would be t exit by t a into u. So, now we can replace that with the temperature. So, we can get this is t naught 4 by t naught a into u which is equivalent to t naught 4 by t naught 2 into u. Now, we can find out the fuel air ratio in the burner or the combustion chamber. So, there we will use the energy balance equation which is m dot a h naught 2 plus m dot a q r equals to m dot a plus m dot a into h naught 4 where q r is the heating value of fuel. But what we have T naught 2 is T naught A. So, we will get F equals to C P 4 T naught 4 by C P 2 T naught A minus 1 Q R by C P 2 T naught A minus C P 4 T naught 4 by C P 2 T naught A. Now, for uh, constant gamma r within the engine, it boils down to C p T naught 4 minus T naught a q r minus C p T naught a. Now, we get the thrust force. Now, thrust Now, since the ex nozzle is fully expanded, so that is P e is P a. So, what we can get is that uh, T equals to m dot a 1 plus f u e minus m dot a u or T by m dot a is 1 plus f u e minus u which is 1 plus f u e by u minus 1 into u. Now, <coughs> we can use another uh, relationship which is u e use t naught 4 by t naught a which is u t naught 4 by t a t a by t naught a. So, u t naught 4 by t a root over 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, the thrust force can be expressed which is m root gamma t a 1 plus f t 
T naught 4 by T A 1 by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square minus 1 and T S F C this could be m dot a by t which is f by t by m dot a. So, these are the situation what you will get from the ideal cycle. Now, in the real cycle the things will deviate and there because there would be nozzle like intake there would be losses which we need to take into account, then the combustor there would be little bit of pressure loss because the combustion efficiency may not be 100 percent, there would nozzle there would be losses. So, what would happen that when we look at the real cycle, now we have to have different pressure ratios or the stagnation pressure ratio uh, like uh, let us say in the diffuser you have R d which is a special ratio which is called P naught 2 by P naught A. Then uh, combustion chamber it is R c which is P naught 4 by P naught 2. Then we have nozzle which is it uh, let us say R n equals to P naught 6 by P naught 4. So, these are the stagnation pressure ratios that we can define and the overall pressure ratio is P naught 6 by P naught A which is R D into R C into uh, R N. So, that is the overall pressure ratio, but uh, the properties gamma R as it pass through the different portion of the engines we can still assume constant. So, now what we write that uh, stagnation pressure at there is gamma minus 1 square by gamma by gamma minus 1. So, what we get from here P A by P naught A gamma minus 1 by gamma into 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square is 1. Similarly, P naught 6 by P 6 we can write 1 my m e square by gamma by gamma minus 1. So, we get 2 by gamma minus 1 P naught 6 by P 6 which is 1. So, we can write 2 by gamma minus 1 into 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square P A by P naught A gamma minus 1 by gamma P naught 6 by P 6 minus 1 which is 2 by gamma minus 1. 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square P naught 6 P A P 6 P naught A gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, this can be written that exhaust Mach number is 2 by gamma minus 1 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square R D R C R N P A by P E gamma minus 1 by this. Let us say we define this quantity is completely something equivalent to M, then we can write 2 by gamma minus 1 into M minus 1. So, that is what you can write. Okay. So, also, if R d, R c, R n is 1, T equals to P a, then we get m equals to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m e square. So, which essentially 
means Me is M. Okay. Now the heat, if the heat transfer from the engine is assumed negligible, then the exhaust total temperature T not six would be T not four, and what we can get is that uh, T not six by T six and T not four by T exit. 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m e x e square. So, we get gamma r t exit gamma r t naught 4 t by t naught 4. So, this is m e gamma r t naught 4 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m e square. So, this is m e gamma r t naught 4 by m. So, we can also see that from here we get that these things is this. So, now what we can write this is m. Now, substituting this what we get u e u is 2 gamma r t naught 4 m minus 1 by gamma minus 1 m. So, irreversibilities they have no effect on total temperature throughout the engine. So, we can find out the fuel air ratio for the real C P 4 T naught 4 minus C P 2 T naught A by eta B Q R minus C P 4 T naught 4 and the specific thrust A U M E by so we use that u equals to m root gamma t then this guy becomes 1 plus f 2 gamma e r t naught 4 m minus 1 gamma minus 1 m minus m gamma r t a plus p e a e by m dot a 1 plus p a by p e. So, that is the specific thrust expression. So, this can be derived and so if you look at the picture like if I plot T by m dot a versus m. So, this is how thing would. So, this is increasing T naught 4 this is the actual uh, ideal cycle and the actual cycle would be like this for both the cases. So, this is ideal one and this is actual cycle how it look like. Similarly, if you see that TSFC versus Mach number so, this is how it look like, this is again, so increasing T naught 4 and this is how the actual cycle would work. So, this is also T naught 4. So, you can see how the specific thrust and um, TSFC they vary between actual and ideal cycle. So, one thing um, is clear here that when you consider the actual cycle the one need to calculate or take into account the losses and irreversibilities which take care and then the actual cycle always deviates from the ideal one. But good to see the ideal one first because that uh, short of a special case of the actual one when all the efficiencies and everything becomes uh, unit and all this. 
but realistically there are losses and so we will continue this discussion in the next class from here.